Good afternoon, this is Pastor Samson. We are glad to see you on this Thursday afternoon. Let us pray. Prayer of the living God in the strong name of Jesus. First and foremost, we glorify you. Honor you as being God. The God that we cannot live without. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the things that you have done. The things that you have led us to do during this day. Father, we ask, Lord, that you pull out from heaven now. Fill our cups, Lord, with wisdom and understanding that we may understand. The things that you are doing in this day, for this is your service, prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Amen. Now, now we are going to go to the beginning of the Bible, and we want to establish a foundation or something. So we're going to read Genesis three, and we're going to get right on off into it. We're going to read Genesis three twelve. Genesis three thirteen. And, and the Lord said unto the woman. What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me. I want you to understand the word beguiled means to wholly seduce. Wholly seduce. The word beguiled means to wholly seduce. And I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and dust thou shalt eat. Of all the days of thy life. Fifteen is why we're here. And I will put empty between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. Now, what actually, this is a prophecy here. And so, what actually the prophecy is about is that Eve, who is the mother of everlasting life, because she, through her lineage and through her, her, her generation, is going to produce Jesus Christ. So, I, actually, God is predict, pre prophesying here that Eve is going to produce someone that is going to bruise the head of, of, of the serpent, which is Satan, represents Satan. Now, we need to establish some things in your hearing so that so that we can set you on a sure foundation and and i'm going to say some things and if you are thirsty then fill your cup because the bible is here i'm going to give you some things ezekiel 28 isaiah 14 ezekiel 28 isaiah 14. the first earth age there was a cherubim a head cherubim named lucifer the bright morning star Sin and iniquity was found in him, and he became Satan because of sin in himself, pride in himself, iniquity in himself. Well, in the first earth age, and, and I know you, a lot of people don't study about the first earth age. You can stack up Peter, the third chapter, talks about it. Um, in the first earth age, when Satan, when Lucifer became Satan, he became good, the tree of good slash evil. That's why... In the Garden of Eden, God told Adam and Eve, don't eat of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. Because what, what he had already done in the first earth age, Revelation 12, he had sold his opinion, his interpretation to one third of God's children in the first earth age. So no one opposed him in the first earth age. Now... We have the second earth age here, where God is taking the souls from the earth, first earth age, and entering them into a dirt vessel coming through the womb of a woman. And by the time we get to the third chapter, Satan, the serpent, has already struck again. To where God gave management power of the earth to Adam, now Adam has given it over to Satan. So God is now prophesying, I'm going to bring someone through Eve's lineage that's going to bruise your head, Satan. This is important. This is important. Go with me here. I'm going to bring someone through. This someone that he's prophesying about is Jesus. So now, when you come down to Noah's time, you had no one opposing Satan. Eve did not oppose Satan. There was no opposing Satan in the first earth age because he took one third of God's children. So now God has prophesied, but I'm going to do something about you, Satan. So, Jesus didn't come on the scene 
to Matthew. But he was being looked for, hoped for, when he came on the scene because he was prophesied by Isaiah some 800 and some years before he ever came. I'm going somewhere. Stick with me. So what I'm, 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 I'm uh, 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 trying to get you to understand is that God set an appointed time that when Jesus would come to the earth so that he, Satan's head could be bruised. Now, Jesus is the second Adam. The church is the second Eve. The first Eve was wholly seduced because Satan asked, the serpent asked her in Genesis 3, has God said? Matthew 4, he came and he told Jesus, turn these stones into bread. He was trying to wholly subduce, subduce Jesus, but Jesus was sent to bruise his head. And those men... Excuse me. That was chosen by Jesus as disciples was the beginning of the discipline of teaching an army to stand against Satan, his principalities, his rulers of darkness, his devils, and his imps. So God has appointed a time not only for Jesus to come bruise his head, and we know Jesus bruised his head because when he slapped death on Jesus, he got up. But in the meantime, before Jesus ever went to the cross, he had already began to teach other men what his father sent him to do. He had already began to discipline other men and women, Mary Magdalene, uh, uh, Peter, Matthew, John. He had already began to teach other men and women the work that the father sent him to do, which would be bruised Satan's head. So when he gave man in Genesis 1, 26 and 27 the right to have dominion to subdue everything that creepeth upon the face of the earth, and Adam gave it to Satan in the third chapter of Genesis, him and Eve, then now God has got to react to take it back from Satan to deliver it back into the hands of his creation. But now, in Adam's time, uh, uh, the Israel didn't have to fight Satan. All they had to do was get a lamb or a dove or a pigeon and bring it to the priest. They didn't have to fight Satan. But when Jesus came, but when Jesus came, Jesus began to unfold and unveil the works of Satan so that they could be spiritually discerned by a group of people called the church, the many member body of Christ. They had never been a group of people in the history of the world that had the right to discern spiritual things, spiritually discern. There was never a group of people that had the right to have the spirit of God living on the inside of them so that they could tell the spirit of error by the spirit of truth. There was never a group of people that had ever been approved in the earth realm that had the right to understand how to walk in and have their footsteps ordered by the word of God with a spirit on the inside revealing what God wanted them to do. There had never been a group of people that had been chosen for the Holy Spirit of God to indwell the believer in their heart and no matter where they were. They had power to stand against the enemy, knew his tactics, and was equipped and supplied by God to fight the enemy and bruise his head. Are oh, y'all with me so far? Mm -hmm. Y'all with me so far? So therefore, when we understand that Jesus, over in the 11th chapter, Paul was saying something, and let's get there and read it. Over in the 11th chapter of, of 2 Corinthians, Paul says something, and I want you to get this understanding because this is why we're beginning to teach in the 11th chapter of 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. Here's what he said. 
For I am jealous of you. 2 Corinthians 11, 2. For I am jealous of you, over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused, which means betrothed you, to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. This is very important. Because we're supposed to be betrothed to Christ, Jewish customs is that the man member body is betrothed to Christ, and the betrothment is just as binding as marriage. And according to Jewish customs, the betrothment broken penalty is death. I'm going somewhere. Stick with me here. So you're saying, why are you here, preacher? I'm here because I want you to understand that we will prophesy not only in Ephesians 1, 3, where he says that before the foundation of the world, he chose us in Jesus, but we will prophesy in Genesis 3, when he told Eve, you and your seed are going to bruise the head of Satan and his seed. In order for God's word to come to pass, Jesus had to place himself on the earth, choose a group of people to discipline, to fight against the oldest war in the history of the world, that God may be seen not only in the invisible, but could see a manifestation in the visible that God is still working and that his prophecy don't lie when he speaks it comes to pass. So here we are. In this season of 2020, and Satan's greatest weapon is holy seducing people. And here's what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11. But I fear least by any means as the serpent beguiled, holy seduced Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupt from the simplicity of, that is in Christ. For if he that come and preach another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if we receive another spirit, which he have not received, or another gospel, which he have not accepted, you might as well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a whip behind the very chiefest apostle. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. He is actually saying, I have betrothed you as a chaste virgin. Well, we all know the story about the ten virgins. So in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, our end time books of the Bible, and he keeps telling the people in there, he said, do not let me come and find you with child. Do not let me come and find you with child. Now, we are betrothed to the truth. We are going to marry the truth. If we get in bed with another spirit, if we get in bed with another Jesus, if we get in bed with another doctrine, we will become impregnated with a doctrine that it exists outside of the doctrine of the betrothment, so we're sleeping with another, so we're no longer a virgin betrothed to Jesus because we have gotten in bed to be fertilized and impregnated by another doctrine, so we receive another spirit, so we are being deceived and beguiled like Eve was. We're being wholly subdued. Let me give you, let me, let me, let me talk to you, let me talk to you. If Jesus' doctrine does not give you hatred as a fruit of the Holy Spirit, and you're sleeping with hatred but saying you're a Christian, that means you are being wholly subduced because the one that owns hatred is the only other side that there is. There's only Jesus and there's only Satan. Now, let me say this. Your preacher can do two things. He can lead you with the truth to God. Or he can leave you with falseness and deception and a lie to Satan. If he preaching the truth, he going to lead you to God by Jesus Christ and the revelation of the Holy Spirit. If he's teaching false, he's going to lead you to Satan, his principalities, his demons and his imps, and you're going to be wholly seduced and you're going to be beguiled. If he teaches in the pulpit to his congregation anything that the doctrine of Jesus Christ does not say, 
You will no longer belong a virgin, but you will be a child in a, a child impregnated, fertilized, to sleep with another God, with another Jesus, and have another spirit. Now, 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 this is important. This is important because the season is coming where the Jesus, the spirit that you're going to sleep with other than the doctrine of the one you have been betrothed to, he's going to come to earth and stand in the temple and say, oh, Jesus. And the Bible said the whole world is going to be deceived by him. But the ones that know the truth, the ones that have the de spiritual discernment to know the spirit of error from the spirit of truth, they won't get in bed with that other Jesus. They won't get in bed with that other spirit. They won't get in bed with that other doctrine. So you're saying, well, preacher, where are you going with this? Here's where I'm going with this. We fight not with flesh and blood. We, got, we fight against spirits and principalities and rulers of darkness. We fight because... They come through our ear gate. They come through our nose gate. They come by our mouth gate. They come by our eye gate. And they come in through the thought process of words or seeds. Let's prove that. Words or seeds. Let's prove that. Let's go to Luke 8. Let's go to Luke 8, 11, Luke 8, 11. Now, but the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside of they that heard, then cometh the devil and take it away the word out of their hearts. Least they should believe and be saved. Satan steals the word. So the word of God is a seed. So, the word of God is wheat. The word of Satan is, is tail. So when you hear GD this and, 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 and chattering and the things of the world and just uh, rapping and Snoop Doggy Dog, those are things that you are made from the dust of the earth. Put a seed in the dirt, you put it in its environment to flourish. So when a seed of the word enters in through your ear gate, lands on your heart to produce a thought, the thought is a fruit of the seed that was planted in the dirt of your heart, that then when the thought bursts open that seed, it produces an action through the mind that the body will become a servant to. Did you understand what I'm saying? I'm going somewhere. Just stick with me for a minute. Let me get it, get it, get it worked out. So what we're actually saying here is that when you get this other Jesus and this other spirit and this other doctrine other than the doctrine of Jesus Christ, God and Jesus said a little leaven spoils the whole look. So we'll sit in church and we'll say it's all right that the pastor is not on the doctrine of Jesus Christ. They might be teaching what if, what if not, whatever you want to believe. Let me explain this. I know what I believe and understand. I believe and understand what the Bible says. Whatever you want to believe, I'm not knocking what you want to believe, but I'm going to preach the truth according to our understanding. If you're preaching rapture, and rapture is not in the Bible, you're on another doctrine. So now let me tell you what happens when you get on that other doctrine. Let me go to Luke 21. Let me go to Luke 21, being I'm in Luke. Let me go to Luke 21, 23. Listen what Luke 21, 23 said. 21, 23. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon his people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. 
And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations and perplexities in the seas and the waves ruin. Men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking. Now, he says all of these things he's de describing, but he's saying people are going to be in, with found with child because they're going to be found with a deception growing in their heart. Who planted it there? Who planted it there? Let's look at Mark 13. Mark 13, 17. Mark 13, 17 says, But woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. For in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of creation, which God created until this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he has chosen, he has shortened the days. For the elect's sake, elected to be a virgin to God. So when you look, it says the kingdom of God was such as that to ten virgins. Five was wise, five was foolish. A virgin is one that is committed and undefiled to her betrothed husband. So when the church has been betrothed to Jesus, if she chooses another doctrine, if she chooses another doctrine, she's going to birth another spirit. If she chooses another doctrine and she births another spirit, she's going to have another Jesus. And that other Jesus is not going to be standing on the sure foundation of what God sent the Jesus to be on. So therefore, you can't bruise Satan's head because there's only two sides. If you are in Jesus, you are warfaring to fight against Satan to bruise his head to take power over him to lay hands, cast out sickness, uh, cast out demons. You are warring against Satan. But if you are with that other Jesus, you are actually legally in Satan's camp. Legally, you belong to Satan. Any other doctrine other than the true doctrine of Jesus Christ, you can't fight Satan legally because you belong to him. You have never been set free because you don't have truth. You could have started out on truth and then veered from truth, got into a church and the church leader leading teaching a doctrine that is not biblical and you will head down Crim Row Lane behind the pastor with another Jesus, another spirit, and another doctrine. You can't fight Satan if you legally belong to Satan. If you a child of Satan, how you look like trying to cast Satan out? A house that body cannot stand. So it behooves you to make sure that you examine yourself and prove whether or not your faith is of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Because he required Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, don't let him come and find you impregnated by another Jesus with another spirit on another doctrine. Because they're going to be mashing their teeth. There are so many doctrines out there, and there's so many millions of people sincere going to church on the interpretations of the Baptist and the Pentecostal, and, and non-denominational, and all you got to do is simply get on the doctrine of Jesus Christ. See, because I learned something a long time ago, and I'm slow, and it means something to me. He said in Matthew, the 16th chapter, Jesus said, he said, who does man say that I am? Peter said, I say you're Christ, son of the living God. Jesus himself said, I'm going to build a church. He has a right to build a church because he died on the cross for the church. And so, therefore, he has a right to lead the church. He has a right to discipline the church. He has a right to intercede for the church. He has a right to be a priest for the church. He has a right to produce fruit in the church. And he has a right to give the church servanthood to do the works that he did because he paid for the right with the crimson blood of the cross, the thorns in his head, and uh, he, they beat him beyond. 
healing and he is the one that is extending grace and if he's not extending grace to you, you can be as sincere in your heart as you want to but you're going to miss the boat because there's no other Jesus but the Jesus of the cross that can save you. There's no other way into the chief pole but the Jesus of God Almighty. So if you get tangled up with all these 33,000 interpretations of meaning, you might be found with child when Jesus show back up to get his virgin. And if you're found with child, there's a chance you won't be an overcomer because in Revelation he says, I think it was Tyree, I have a few things against you. You have allowed that Jersey bill that false prophet to teach my people and seduce them. That's what he said. He said, you have allowed Jezebel, who called herself a prophet and is false, to teach and seduce my people in the church. He had a thing against that because Jezebel was not teaching the doctrine of Jesus Christ. See, Jesus paid a lot to be able to give you the doctrine of salvation. He paid a lot for you to have it and keep it. Now, let's go a step further. If God chose you, Ephesians 1, if God chose you, he chose you and has already ordered your footsteps, separate your end from your beginning, gave you power, divinely supplied you, to stand in your season and proclaim the doctrine of Jesus Christ, played for you by the purchased blood of the cross, and for him to wait for you this long since before the foundation of the world, and then you're going to get up and just be so careless with your salvation that you're going to get in bed with anything and call it Jesus, any spirit, a spirit of error. Listen, 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 let's get down the way the rubber moves the road, meets the road. There are so many people calling liars and, and hatred and racism and prejudice the truth in Christians that I've never seen anything like it. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says if you don't have love, you might as well not have nothing. So how can people walking with hatred, how can people worry more about the world than they're worried about the kingdom of God and winning souls by the gospel of Jesus Christ? How in the world can they be Christians when they're not attempting to walk with love but is walking with hatred every day? I can't see how you can't be spiritually discerned that because if you can't discern God's love because God is love, you in bad shape. You can't walk with a good person and because they do something good, you're going to call them a child of God. He said know them by their spirit and know them by their fruit. And we think that we can interpret it any way we want to. And, oh, they're a good person, so they'll be all right. They did a couple of good things. They ain't what God said. You sleeping with another Jesus. You sleeping with a Jesus that's beguiling you to tell you you can walk with hatred and be a Christian of the living God? Can't do it. You can't do it. You can't walk with anything and satisfy God. You can't do it. You got to do it according to the Bible. The Bible says the Bible, the doctrine of Jesus Christ, is not up for private interpretation. Don't add nothing to it. Don't take nothing away from it. So don't make up in your mind, because you want to be politically and religious, that you can walk with hatred and you can worry about everything the political system doing when the whole political system is in bed with the beast, getting its power from the beast, all of them drinking the wine of fornication to get rich. And you thinking a man can save you when God and, and Jesus, God created you, Jesus redeemed you, and the Holy Spirit reveals you. So now I want to know how you think man can do anything for you when Jesus and God says things are going to get bad in perilous time. He said it's going to get worse and worse. He said they're going to come a great falling away. He said love is going to wipe cold. He said they're going to become perilous time when man is going to love pleasure more than he's going to love anything. And he said they was going to have a type of godliness but no power. We're in those days, and there is no maturity of spiritual discernment to tell the spirit of error from the spirit of truth. 
So we're sleeping with a Jesus according to how the pastor or the denomination or the group of people that we are socially hanging out with, we're sleeping with what they say. We're sleeping with their doctrine. And the thing about it is when you're not on Jesus in the truth, you legally belong to Satan. Mm -hmm. You can't fight Satan unless God gives you the power and supply you to fight him and you got the blood of Jesus and you are a true Christian by the doctrine of Jesus Christ. You can't fight Satan. Ain't the use of you talking about let me pray. Who you praying to? I don't know who that other Jesus leads you to pray to. But see, I have the right to pray to God by the chief intercessor, Jesus. By the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. I have a right to do that. But that other Jesus, you can pray, but you're not praying to God. Because you ain't got love, you ain't got nothing. So God is not your father. Even though he created you, you're not worshiping him. And by the time you wake up and realize you're not worshiping him because you've been worshiping your pastor all these years, my pastor is a man of God. And you haven't even discerned that your pastor got another Jesus and another spirit. I'm not talking about any pastor. But if you're not lining up with what this Bible said from Genesis to Revelation, you're leading your people up the uh, up the up Crimson Lane to be slaughtered. If any individual don't uh, don't protect their own salvation by studying to show themselves approved a workman that need not be ashamed, if any Christian does not live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, if any Christian don't make sure they know the doctrine of Jesus Christ, they asking for trouble because these people out here telling you. By the millions. I'm a Christian and hating people for the color of their skin. I'm going to go one further for you. I'm a black man, an African black man. But that don't matter. What matters to me is I'm a living, born, sanctified Christian. And I am a Jesus man. That's what matters to me. That's what matters to me. I'm not getting drunk with what the curse of the world is doing because God already foretold me the world was going to go crazy. I don't have to worry about you cannot fight what's going on out there in that world by out there marching. You got to get down on your knees and find you a prayer closet and an inner chamber. You got to go into that prayer closet and that inner, inner chamber. You got to reach up and pour down some strongholds. You got to plant some things. You got to root out some things. But you can't fight this battle with a physical fight because it is spiritually discerned. This thing is spiritual. It's not physical. And you're fighting in the wrong place. You can't back up a man and be with that man and think these things gonna change. You got to be with God. And there's so many people drunk thinking that they're gonna make a difference in all this chaos all over the world when God and his agents of change called the true Christian, the remnant, is the only change that can come in the earth realm by the power of Jesus Christ, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, and by the word of their testimony in the blood of the Lamb. We are overcomers. We overcome what's in the physical because we work in the spiritual. But if you're working with that other Jesus, you got no power. You got another spirit, but you have not the Holy Spirit. If you're thinking that you can change the earth because you and some other people got together and did something, you have never really looked at God Almighty. You don't know Jesus because they said this thing was going to happen. And Second Thessalonians said, he who will let is going to let it happen. Luke 21 says a snare going to fall on the whole earth. And we sitting up talking about when things get better. Things, huh? Bing, 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 bing. Things aren't going to get better. Things aren't going to get better. Uh -uh. Your hope and your faith and your endurance better be in God. Because for the, the world, it's a downward spiral. Satan going to make sure of that. Satan is going to try to take as many as he can to burn in hell fire with him. And all those people... That's caught up in these churches 
on another doctrine, thinking they can walk with anybody they want to walk with and believe anything they want to believe and omit the doctrine of Jesus Christ and get in bed with that other Jesus and that other spirit. Don't cast it down. Don't put it down. Don't cast out strongholds. Just walk hand in hand with it, loving it, because I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. And they don't know Jesus in the pardon of their sins. They've got that other Jesus. And with that other Jesus and that other spirit, anything goes. You can do anything you want to do. You can set you up a building in your front room, bring that other Jesus in, and have an orgy, and get up and do what you want to do, because there is no discipline with that other Jesus. You can do what you want to do. So you're saying, where you at, preacher? Here's where I am. Why did God place you in 2020 with all this corona? They say there's another epidemic coming called that swine flu that they're catching from the hogs over in China. They say there's another one coming from the same place this one came from. And they saying it's bad. So we realize us ones on the doctrine of Jesus Christ realize that the plagues were supposed to come. The blood moons were supposed to come. Natural disasters, earthquakes, uh, wars, rumors of war, they were supposed to come. Man drinking the wine of fornication, running riches in the political system in bed with Satan to get riches and drinking that wine in the merchants trying to rob the banks of the poor. All these things are supposed to happen in the end time. And they're happening. They're beginning to happen and just like rain. Two or three prophecies opening every day. And, 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 and the majority of what you call the building church, the one that Jesus is not building upon this rock in the gates of hell will not prevail again. That building church that's got the man that they are, are worshiping because he's famous or got the man that worshiping because he's friends with the leaders of the political system, those people have another Jesus. They got another spirit. Let me explain something. Let me explain something. Revelation 16 says that there were three unclean spirits. Let me go ahead and just go on and read it. Here's what he said. Revelation 16, 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, which means Satan, and out of the mouth of the beast, which means Satan, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. He said there was three unclean spirits that came out of the mouth of the dragon, came out of the mouth of the beast, and came out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now, Anything that's not protected by the blood of the Lamb has no power to resist the seeds that this false prophet is pouring out of his mouth that is an unclean spirit. So what happens is they'll stand up and they'll look at this leader with these unclean spirits coming out of his mouth and they'll say, I can't stand him. He's a blah, blah, blah. She's a blah, 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 blah. And when they hear him speak, the wine of the fornication of the drunkenness of the harlot, of the great whore of Babylon, will pull them under the dimension, dominion and the power of that evil spirit. And the next thing you know, they'll declare, I'm with him, I'm with her. Because they do not know how to discern that that evil spirit coming out of the mouth. Listen to what he told the, 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 the church. He says, you have allowed that false prophet Jezebel to seduce my people by false teaching. So now, tell me something. The Bible said, for Satan not to assemble yourself together, especially as you see the time of pro. How can you call yourself a Christian? You don't even attend church. You're not being the church. You don't go to church, but you're a Christian. You're not doing the work that Jesus did. And Jesus said, if I abide in you and you abide in me, the works that I do, you will do also in greater work. How are 
are you a part of what Jesus is doing to prove Satan hanging and all you do is go sit in the building and tell somebody who your pastor is and tell somebody I'm with them? How is that church? See, you can't fight Satan because you with Satan. No, I'm not judging you, but I can discern you. And you got a spirit of error on you because you are, you got a whole lot of fruit that belong to Satan, so you must belong to his camp. You can't pour down nothing not, because there's only two sides. Now, if I work for God, I can pour down everything Satan say. Watch this. This book right here is open. It's open to whomsoever will that we get in it and look, look for. Jesus Christ's arms wide open. Whomsoever will can have salvation. The Holy Spirit wide open to reveal to end whomsoever will what God wants to say. Have you ever noticed that Satan's people move in secret? Satan's people lie and hide. Satan's people are, 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 are clever and crafty and seducers and beguilers. And they come on you slow like. And they'll disguise themselves to get close to you. But God's people... They're full of love and they wide open. Their life is wide open before God and it's wide open before a lost and dying earth because God nominated them to help him get lost souls in. But it's Satan that hides everything. They'll tell you, oh, I love everybody. While they go in the bike, throw an arrow over there and tell you to look over there. While they lie to you over there. And then people, millions of people will say, yes, nothing greater. And got no love, got no truth, got no spirit of God. But yeah, it's a woman and a man of God. No spiritual discernment. So the church will get in bed with any spirit, any Jesus, because... They don't know the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And they can't discern one spirit from another spirit. And they can't discern good fruit from bad fruit. Let me explain to you how you're supposed to get that done. Don't tell nobody I told you. Jeremiah was a neighbor. He was a young boy. He was chosen by God. Jeremiah said, no, Lord, I'm just a young lad. God said, uh, don't you worry about how you see yourself. Because I'm going to make a move. And when I make this move, it's going to change your whole life. It's going to set you over kingdoms and nations. To pull down, to pluck out, to root out. What you going to do, God? I'm going to put my word in your mouth. He reached away, he touched the altar, and touched Jeremiah's mouth and put his word in Jeremiah's mouth, like he did the church, you know, the church of Jesus Christ. Then he immediately asked Jeremiah, Jeremiah, discern for me, tell me what you see. Jeremiah began to tell him, I see an almond tree. He said, you have seen well, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, tell me what you see. Jeremiah's would tell him. He said, you have seen well, Jeremiah. What did God do for the young lad, Jeremiah, to change his whole perspective of how he saw himself? He put his words in his mouth. Yep. If you don't have God's word in your mouth, you got another Jesus, you got another spirit. So when you are asked, tell me what you see. I don't know, Lord. We're in the generation of the fig tree. God asked Jeremiah, what you see? He said, I see two baskets of figs. Describe them to me, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 24. Jeremiah said, one is very, very, very good. But there's another that's very, very, very bad. They both look just alike. But one is evil and one is good. When you got God's word in your mouth, you can spiritually discern spiritual things. But when you don't have God's word, you can't spiritually discern the spirit of error from the spirit of truth. 
And the world got you chasing your tail so much so that you are not trying to study to show yourself approved so you will have the sword of the spirit. So you will armor up spiritually. So you will just go to church and listen to the pastor. And if the pastor is on the wrong doctrine, he's going to lead you to be on the wrong doctrine. Right. This is Pastor Samson. We'll see you soon.